Welcome to tonight's playoff matchup between Lakota West and West Claremont. I'm Brent Phelan along with Dan Zubrink. And we are excited to present the first Lakota West game of the year for Westchester TV. West Claremont won the toss, elected to receive, and Lakota will be kicking off. Well, it's a nice kick as he kicks it all the way yeah, through the end zone. That's Matthew Howard as the kicker and has done a great job so far this year. Very common that he kicks it through the end zone. So West Claremont will take over starting from, the from their 20-yard line, first and 10. So just a little bit, bring you up to speed here. Lakota West is undefeated 5-0. and They did miss one opportunity to play because of COVID. They are ranked number two in the state, and they're the number one seed here in Southwest Ohio Division I. West Claremont is one and three, and is the 16th seed out of the Eastern Cincinnati Conference. So West Claremont will start from their own 20. They are a running team. Hand the ball straight up the middle. Good run right off the bat. That's number 45. Wow, running right into the strength of uh, what has been Lakota West strength, Brent, all years. You know, we talked about this before the game. They've, they've pitched three shutouts. And defensively, as strong as you see, is it just runs right up the gut. He runs right in. Just good blocking in the interior. Yeah, that's 45. Austin Fultz, a senior. And you'll see they do run the ball a lot this, you know, tonight. They've thrown it very few times on the season. So first and 10, that was a 20-yard jaunt out to the 40-yard line. Same play again. Fultz right up the middle and gains about four. Yeah, Looks like. You might as well. I mean, if it worked that well the first time, why not go right back to it? And they end up getting three yards out of it. So, you know, positive yardage. And, again, that's going to be, um, you know, West Claremont's Achilles heel tonight is to try and get something off this defense. No one else has. I mean, again, they've a weird season, Brent. You know, they've only played five games. We're supposed to play six, but COVID-19 took out the Oak Hills game. But it's kind of hard, small sampling size this year. But, you know, the defense for Lakota West is their strength. Yeah, they've only given up 20 points on the season, which was 13 in one game, 7 in one, and three shutouts. Which is a pretty strong, and one of those the shutouts came against a pretty good Coleraine team, so. Here we go. We'll see this on second and seven. They, no backs, and they just do a student body right in the old world, right? Line four, four guys off to the right, do the handoff. Looks like they're going to mark him at the first down marker at the 50-yard line, so first and 10 Claremont. Yeah, first and 10, three plays, two first downs which is a lot better than some teams the entire game got. Yeah, that. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's definitely a surprise. I don't know if uh, Lakota West was, hasn't realized the game started yet, but uh, they've, they've definitely been shutting people down. And if you look on the season, you know, in the four games that they've, or the, yeah, the four games that West Claremont's played, they've run for 656 yards. So expect a lot of this. Uh, yeah. Comparably, from a passing perspective, They've only thrown for 113 and four and four. Oh, good change there. I don't know if there was a fumble. It looked like there was a scramble for the ball at the end of that. See, see what see what they're looks like. They're going to mark him down. Yeah, they're marking him down by contact and forward progress. So, no fumble. But we'll see a replay of that, right? Well, here's a straight dive up inside. When he stopped immediately, that's Kovacs, number nine. He's normally number 33, by the way. Their leading tackler, number nine, his name's Kovacs, Jackson Kovacs. They're inside linebacker and leading tackler, but uh, he ripped his jersey, I think, so he's wearing number nine today. They're trying to confuse us. So the ball came loose, but apparently they already marked that he was down or forward progress had stopped. So we're second and seven from the Lakota West 47-yard line. Number two for West Claremont's going to come around the right side. Good. Looked like he was going to be able to get that out to the side, but got strung out. That was Gage Bullock, a senior. Number two, uh, by the time it was all said and done, he actually lost a half yard. Yeah, 23 came in with the assist on that to, to, to help with that tackle, uh, Adam Mueller or Miller, but uh, or Aiden Miller. But uh, that was a good job recovering on that. And, and I think the one thing, Brent, you got to worry about here is apathy. They think they're going to beat them. You know, they're the number one team playing the number, you know, the last place team. You know, did they come into this thing and they just throw their helmets on the field and they're going to win the game? And so, you know, you know, it's nice. Uh, West Claremont come out here, punch them in the mouth a little bit, wake them up. So here we go, third and eight from the. 48-yard line of Lakota West. Again, you're going to see that reverse. And then the ball definitely loose here. Picked up and gone. So that's going to be your first touchdown for the defense yes. of the season. That's actually three touchdowns this season. Two interception touchdowns and now a fumble recovery. They've had a little bit of balance here for Lakota West, right? We've had uh, eight touchdowns rushing, eight passing, and 
Now this is the third from the defensive perspective. We'll see the replay yeah, here. It's an inside trap, and it looks like they right there. They got him going by. The, one of the interior linemen grabbed his arm, and the ball just squirted out. And number ten is that? Yeah, that's Cy Walters. Obviously picked it up on on the go from his safety position, and returned it all the way for the touchdown. So uh, after a little bit of a, a, a slow and surprising start. From that perspective, obviously the defense uh, turned turn. that around real quick. Yeah, from Lakota, you want to do that. You want to jump out on top of a team like this. You don't want to give them any hope and think that you know let them stay in the game and, and you know give them hope and then they start playing harder and all that. So nice for Lakota to get this, pick it up, and from the other side of the field, they're gonna go, okay, here we go again. So you know that worked out well for West. So that was Matthew Howard with the touchdown or with the extra point. Matthews, 15 of 18 on the season and one field goal. So one of the leading scorers as well. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Cy, Cy uh, Walters is a opportunity. He had an interception last week in, in, a, in the Mason game. So he's uh, Mr. Uh, be where you need to be and Mr. Opportunity to come up with this stuff on the defense. And they've, as we said in the outset, Brent, this is a very, very good defensive team. You're going to probably see more of that. Um, especially they fo they force West Claremont into throwing the ball. If they get out ahead of them and put them into something they don't really like to do, you'll, you'll see some more, you know, additional turnovers. I think that's, you know, hard not to do. You know, and that happens when you run the ball a lot. And it also, I can tell you, they, you know, they did fumble a lot this year. You had uh, the quarterbacks fumbled three times rushing. One of the running backs has fumbled four times. He actually fumbled three times in a 15-point loss to Wenton Woods, which wow. makes it kind of hard as an offense if you're yeah. putting, turning the ball over that, that often. So they you only get so many possessions, so you know, that shortens those possessions if you do that, and that make, you know makes it hard for you to score, and probably gave Wenton Woods a good opportunity to score. So there's the kick, obviously wow. through the end zone again. Well, wow, that travel that was in the air through the end zone. So this kid's got a big leg. Yeah, and it's nice to see. I mean, you know, when you have a strong defense like Lakota West has, giving up 20 points on the season. It's great when the other team has to go 80 yards. Well, and you know, I got to tell you something. Um, the thing you see when you get excellent coaching like you get from Tom Bolden, you know, and he's came up here. Every aspect is good. Special teams, everything is covered and covered well. They do everything well. There's nothing left to chance. There's nothing that's average. You know, good kickers, good kick return. Everything's really, really good. Every every I is dotted and every T is crossed. It's been kind of interesting the, uh, the way the setup is from West Claremont. We just have the one cornerback on the field for Lakota West. They've added an extra safety or linebacker into the mix because they're, they know West Claremont's going to try to run the ball. There they go again, running it straight up the middle, tackled by the interior of the line there. You'll see number 90, Andre Prophet, and number 98, Anish Vaez, always very involved on the inside. 99, Brian Henderson also. And West runs a 3-4, uh, so there's three interior linemen. They'll have four linebackers you know, at any given time. So you'll see a lot of linebackers. And they get a lot of, you know, the, the job of the interior linemen is to pick off those blockers so the linebackers can make the plays. And you'll see a lot of linebackers making tackles for this West defense. Well, what's really nice is when your interior defensive line is 290, 260, 260, uh, it's hard for the offensive lineman to get back to those linebackers. Big high for, for back to pass for the first time and didn't have any time. Actually, that's Anish Vaez, number 98, with the sack. So he had a stop and now a sack, and that's what you're going to see. I mean, they drop back to throw the football, and you can tell it's just not what they do. Here, here's well. a replay. You're going to see that. There's 98. Just pulls the guy through. Got a little bit of outside pressure from Henderson. And then when the quarterback attempted to step up, there was Vaez there to finish him off for a five-yard loss. So, you know, and, and really, Lakota only had three guys rushing. Right. And they right. were able to get that kind of pressure from two of the guys. And the, the offensive line, you were talking on the way up here. You know, we were looking at uh, West Claremont warming up. They're not very big um, down there. I mean, these guys are going to be outweighed and outsized pretty much all night, and uh, it's going to be tough for them to, to block these guys up front. For those of you not familiar, then there they go, just a fullback straight up the middle for maybe a yard. It's going to give you fourth and 14. That just shows two things. One, you, you, they don't throw the ball. I mean, 116 yards on the season. But secondly, three guys just got rushed in a sack. That was safety. They didn't want to give the ball up. Right. You know, a fumble or a turnover because actually the ball did come loose from the quarterback on the sack inside well, okay. their own 20-yard line. So at least trying to punt and make Lakota West move the ball offensively, which they've not been great at this year. That's true. I mean, they're, the strength of this team has been the defense. Although, much to their credit, they have a sophomore quarterback that played a lot last year as a freshman. 
started by about the third game of the season, got some experience and kind of baptism by fire. Had a lot of fumbles last year and, and you know, from freshman mistakes. This year, much better, but they're still not scoring a lot. That's number four, Jair Hollywood Brown. Comes up, makes the catch, brings it back all the way to the right side. Inside the 10, the 5, knocked out of bounds. It looks like about the 4-yard line, Dan. Yeah, wow, what a nice move. What, there's some speed and quickness there, isn't there? Yeah, now, and, and Jair, who is a junior, but he's already committed to Ohio State, one of the top you know, four-star recruit. Kid moved in. Yeah, he came from Louisiana, and the family moved back up here, and you wonder how in the world do they end up at Lakota West. His older brother had played for Coach Bolden at Coring. Right. So when the family moved back to the area, they found Coach Bolden now over here at Lakota West and brought him here, which and kind of a nice fit when a, uh, when a four-star Ohio State commit junior Moves cornerback in. comes in and, and obviously he does a great job at corner, but special teams yeah, are pretty nice too. It's amazing how quick and speedy he is. I'm surprised they don't play him a little bit. At the, you know, when they run triple option, well, he'd be pretty deadly if you got him out in space on the pitch. And, and it looks like he'd be tough, but I mean, you don't want to wear him out, obviously. And, you know, going both ways and at this level of high school is tough to do. So, number seven, Mitch Bolden, the sophomore starting quarterback, hands off to Good. And there it is. Tw yeah, number 25, Cameron Good. Uh, that didn't take long. Yeah, junior there, who's uh, one of the leading rushers on the season so far. Here's a, you're going to see him, just a, a, a clean Straight handoff man. to the left side. And look at the line. Look at that. Look at the hole. There's nobody there. I, yeah, he actually you went, in, he actually he went into the end zone untouched. On which you know from from which a goal line, which is which is pretty rare. Yeah. He is the second, uh, actually, he's the second most attempts, but the leading rusher for Lakota West this year. And they got a lot of balance. You know, the quarterback has 216 yards. Uh, Good has 235 yards. So you know, which quite is a unexpected. You know, usually you see in a triple option, you'll see a single back or the fullback that score. You know, that, that is the leading rusher. But looks like they do it by committee, and everybody touches the ball and. That's good because from a defense perspective, watching films, all right, who do I, you know? What are we looking for? Who do we guard? You know, when you're scouting somebody, it's real tough when anybody can take the ball and go. So we're going to see the the punt return here. There's Jair Brown. Yeah, fakes draws everybody <laughs> in and then gets to the outside, and nobody there's got the speed to catch him. You know, and some nice blocks. We'll see that. You know, we can see that ahead of them, and you know, that's one of the things you find. That was, I think, Cam Vargas, 44. Wow, that was a great block over uh, there. Looks like, and, and there he goes down. Yeah, and there's Cy Walters who returned that f uh, the fumble for a touchdown, Cy. a block helping him inside the 10. Cy doing it all, man. He's playing defense. He's blocking. He's scoring touchdowns. I mean, he's having a pretty good game. So here we are with 5.55 still to go in the first quarter. Lakota West 14 and the West Claremont T-Wolves nothing. West Claremont, as I said, has only been a school for a handful of years now. The district had two schools in the past, Glen Esty and Amelia, and they consolidated them, built a new building out there. And uh, But they play out in that Eastern Cincinnati Conference. They're one of the few teams in that conference that's actually Division One. A lot of them are Division Two. Yeah, that's uh, you can see from the size of the kids and Kings? the size of the school. Is Kings in that division? Yeah, Kings and okay. Turpin and uh, Anderson. You know, there's quite a few teams in, out there, but uh, yeah, they just don't have as many students, and I think that shows when they don't have maybe as many athletes and they certainly don't have as much size their team. If you just take a look out there on the field right now, you're going to see, a, you know, again, the defensive line is 290, 260, 260 for Lakota West and uh, – you're not going to see that on the, on the other side of the line. Yeah, both those high schools you talked about combining here, uh, who, who was it, Amelia and Glen Estee. Glen Estee were not powerhouses in football at their times either. So, uh, you know, I think it's two relatively average teams combined for, you know, a, a, it's just not, there's not a lot of kids, not a lot to pick from. They don't have the size and speed that a lot of the bigger schools get. And, you know, you got to compete with the best you can, but it's tough when you're competing against Lakota West and the GMC that, you know, with what they compete against week in and week out. And that's Foltz again up the middle for, for two yards. After that first run he had, uh, it seems like it's gone progressively uh, you know, downhill. Downhill, yeah, right. They're just, uh, those, those holes aren't quite as open as they were the first time around. Gain two, second and eight from the 22-yard line. I don't, I don't want to dismiss the fact Matt Howard, that's his third touchback. So, again, it puts your defense in a great position. Yeah. And actually, you think about special teams that, you know, helped Lakota West there. You know, West Claremont doesn't even get a chance to return them. You know, West Claremont just tries to sweep on that and uh, comes up. You know, the defense, the interior lineman West is just, you know, that was that was a uh, defensive lineman made the tackle on that. These guys are uh, really, really impressive. 
Here we go again. We're going to see that. So they just tried to hand 22 to the right it's side. Straight sweep. It just got blown up. I mean, you see. And it's a D lineman or blowing. It didn't, you know, penetration. It yeah, that was two, Jones. Three, four yards deep. Jones, number eight, was, what, three yards in the back. Right. So the two yards again on first down were lost on, on second. Here we go again, trying to bring it all the way back across, and there's just nothing there. That was the exact play they ran for the fumble before, but this kid, time the kid hang on. And that's Kuwatch, number nine, as we mentioned earlier, leading tackler with, uh, I think, 39 tackles or 38 tackles on the year going into this game, which these numbers all seem a little bit light. They've only played five games. games, Yeah, it's so so weird to go, wow, leading tackle with 30-some tackles, but... You know, again, you know, when you only play five games, that's that's pretty good. So here we are with the – they're going to be punting again from just over their 20-yard line. You, you, know, you want to keep the ball away probably from number four, Brown. But I'll tell you what, number five, uh, Adrian Davis I'd is a burner as well. Yeah, I'd kick it out of bounds. So even if they go to the other guy, I'm going to tell you he's a burner. So fortunately, the ball was a short punt and then got a good roll. So that was probably about the best impact they could get. Going to town it at the Lakota West 47-yard line. So – around 32, 33 yards on the punt, which actually is pretty much what they average if we looked at their punting statistics. They've had a couple of different guys punt this season, but they're somewhere around that 30, 32 yards. So, so, so Brett, for the average person, maybe just turn this on, never heard the word COVID-19. Tell us what happened this year in high school football, what, what the rules are, what happened, how we ended up here after really five games. I think there were six that were scheduled. Um, how did we get here? Well, obviously what they decided to do from the perspective, they weren't sure, right? We weren't sure in preseason what was going to happen. We've had several games get canceled because of, you know, positive cases at schools. So what they did to try to get the most opportunities for everybody and to still give them a chance because kids had lost the end of the winter season last year. Kids lost, you know, the spring last year. Here here he comes all the way back across. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, we may have an injury there. I'll tell you back at the. At midfield, it was a really nice blindside block by Adrian Davis, number five, meaning that, you didn't know, he, see it coming. It, it, but number two for West Claremont, didn't see it coming at all. That's Gage Bullock. And I can tell you, actually, in the NFL, that'd be a penalty these days. Right. But uh, right, you're, you're we're going to see it here. That. In high school, it's fine, but when you're a pro, you can't do it. So he, the play started all the way to the left. When it wasn't there for good, he came all the way back around the right. There he go, And he, he yeah. set that block up pretty well. And that's a legal block. I mean, he didn't leave yeah. with the head. I mean, he hit him in the shoulders. I mean, it was not that was not anything that was nefarious, I don't believe. So there you go, 18-yard gain for good. Bolden back to pass for the first time. Nothing there, but no pressure. You're going to see he is uh, the second leading rusher on the team, and he takes that for about 11 yards. Yeah, picks up the first down. So it will be a first, time, first down at the 24-yard line. But what they decided to do with football is – they had everybody just play, you know, six weeks. And then every single team in the state of Ohio had the opportunity to play in the playoffs. And I think over 600 out of 700 signed up to play in the playoffs. So, uh, like, you know, it's actually the way basketball and baseball and most sports have always been volleyball. Right. Uh, it's just football had that limited playoff. So this year, everybody got an opportunity. There's good pass to Aiden. And there you go. To I'm sorry, to Adrian. Ooh, keep, holds the ball there. Adrian Davis. Yeah, Davis picks up uh, first down and, and more. So, uh. so, so Bolden to Davis, first pass completion of the game. But so what we so what's going on here is that means that you're going to have some of these matchups this week, right? Right. Uh, Bullock, and it's good to see number two back in there put pressure on Bolden. Number two, Bullock was the guy that got blindside blocked. Right. So it's good to see him and back Bullock's on the field. Bullock's our that best quick. player. I was talking to the, Col- the, the Claremont coaches before this, and he said that you'll see him run the ball. You'll see him make tackles. He plays linebacker, corner. He does about everything for him. So, so there's a they, so played five wide. Put all the receivers out, just Bolden in the shotgun. He rolled out to his left, threw the ball successfully there. Looked like that was, was it 15, Jace Hesketh? Yeah, it was. I believe just a quick, you'll see him, just comes in and then cuts out. The other guys run deeper, so he hits in there just to see what's happening. Bullock tackled him at the, looks like the four-yard line. He went out of bounds. Right. So it brings uh, up a fir- or looks first like we. Goal. Well, let's see what happened here. It looks like uh, we have an unsportsmanlike conduct call. For number five, so uh, so Adrian Davis was called. So that's going to be a dead ball. Take it back 15 yards. And I'm not sure what they call it, unsportsmanlike? Called an unsportsmanlike. I didn't see it. Usually that means he said something. Said something or buried the guy. So from, from that perspective, I'm, you wonder. And the way it works typically here with the unsportsmanlike now, that's his first time. If you get a second one of those, you can be uh, ejected from the game. So here we go. It'll be first and goal from the 19-yard line, or 
See if that's correct how they've done that. Just want to check and see. Nice hit. Good tackle. Now there's a penalty down the there. I'm, I'm not sure who that was on. It, uh, two players got tangled up. Yeah, I don't know if that was West being extracurricular or if uh, the Claremont. Yeah, didn't get a up. didn't get a good view of that. It looked like uh, is that number 16 maybe? Yeah. From they, they were tangling over there or something. I, I don't know what it was at though. The official immediately. Yeah, we'll see right that. There. You're going to see it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't in the play. It, it was like in the upper right hand corner. And it was 10 yards screen. past where this uh, where Davis got the ball there right. and gets tackled here. Yeah, you're not, it's not Can't even there. see it. No. Yeah, it's a little bit further downfield. It looked like number 16 for Lakota West, Gillespie. So they're calling on Gillespie, the tight end. Wow, what plays in your playbook for first and goal? It's, so know. it actually is going to be third down, because now and, and the reason for this is the last two plays have been dead ball. So the plays okay. counted. Gotcha. So that last one actually became second and 19. And now we're going to go back another, another 15 yards. So uh, the best two plays so far for West Claremont have been those two, two, personal fouls. two penalties after, yeah, after the fact. See, the, uh, they're stopping the clock here. It looks like uh, Coach Bolden would like to have a little bit more information on what's happened these last two plays. So we'll see what see what's happening there. It looks like... Uh, you see him down there, officials yeah, explaining it. Officials explaining it to him. I, and he's not too upset about it, not knowing him. If he didn't agree with it, you'd know it. So yeah, here we go. They're going <laughs> to... It's interesting. So the, while, the, while the umpire was back talking to the coach and had, had waved the clock down, the play clock continued to run. Uh -huh. So Lakota West was about to snap the ball, thinking they were going to get to delay a game, when the uh, the um, when the uh, head official here decided what's going on. They called timeout. Yeah. So now Tom Bolden <laughs> has just called a timeout. Let's get reset here. It actually ends up being third and 33 or third and goal from the 33 yard line. Yeah, it's third and 33, third and goal. I don't know what play you have in a uh, option style offense, triple option, where you got a 33 yard play. Now the, the one you know the one thing they do have at Lakota West is as we saw on the punt return, they do have some dynamic athletes. Oh, oh yeah. So the question would be, is there somebody you can get into the end zone and maybe make a play on the ball and make a better play on the ball than the defensive player? Probably, or I bring Ford here and just pitch him and let him try and catch him because he seems to be awful, awful uh, good. Um, very good athlete, very explosive. Just trying to get him the ball in space and see what he can do. Jair Brown seems to be a heck of an athlete. And I'm not sure too many players on the field that could catch him if he got into, into space. So we'll, we'll point out some of these offensive linemen as well in case we, we haven't talked about them so far tonight. We're going to start on the left side. You've got number 77, who's also an Ohio State commit. That's Tegra Shabola. Did Tegra already commit? He he's did. Only, what, is he a junior? He's a junior, yeah. Next to him at the left guard is Ed Bolden, number 72. Ooh, watch out. And there you go. That I tell you, Bullock is he, he's making plays. Yes. So sack from Bullock. It's going to be not back to the 41. It's going to be fourth and goal at the 41. Coach Bolden is upset. I don't now. I don't. He's on the official there. I don't know what what happened there that we missed. I'm not sure either. He was right. more upset about whatever happened there than he was on the uh, two prior plays. Official doesn't seem too receptive to him. So Lakota West is going to punt. So hey, you know West Claremont. There's a positive. From uh, the ball down at the five-yard line, they're now making Lakota West punt the ball. And that was actually not um, – that was Seabalm that made the play. Kyle Seabalm came oh. over number seven, not number two. I apologize. Good for Kyle. Not a problem. But, yeah, I want to get his name straight. So here we go from the 40-yard line. we got a punt. Looks like it's going to go right into the end zone. Well, you don't normally see a succession of plays that takes you from first and goal inside the five. To, to punt. To fourth and goal from the 40. That's yeah. Caleb Rao, number one, the punter. He does a lot of different things for Lakota West. And that time, 40-yard punt, but uh, into the end zone. So West Claremont will start exactly where they've started all three possessions at their own 20-yard line. Yes. So three kickoff touchbacks and now a punt touchback. But, you know, that's a win, isn't it, for their defense? It is a win for the defense. You know, it had, they were looking, at, looking down the barrel, 14 nothing, game getting out of control, and uh, they held in there and got a couple penalties that – and kept them off the board, and West kept moving backwards. So minute 46 here to go in the first quarter. Lakota West up 14-0. See if there's anything different. There's that same run up the middle to 45. Looks like he gained about one. That's Folds. He's going to be sore if they keep running that play. I mean, he's run into some big defensive linemen. The D line's controlling the line of scrimmage, and if you've got that going on, you're going to win a football game. I mean, it's just, you know, it's all at the line of scrimmage. Offensive, defensive linemen are who win football games, and, 
Right now, we'll go to West defensive line you know, doing their job and just controlling the line. You know, you, you see the defensive line, then you see number eight, uh, Jones. You see nine, who we talked to watch earlier. You Kuwach, see 20, yeah. 23 there. That's Aiden Miller. The linebackers are right there also. I'm, oh, the linebackers are fantastic. They're all filling the hole. So I'm, I'm, I've got to imagine for West Claremont, it just looks like there's a wall of red Well, and then your jerseys. corners are, I mean, you know, you can't really throw because you got great corners. So here we're going to come out the outside. Oh, my gosh, that was a... Uh, a pretty nice hit by 44, Cam Vargas, yeah. another linebacker. So the running back thought he might get to corner, and here we'll go. You're going to see 44 come out of nowhere. So here you go, 13 running the ball, cuts it up, thinking he's got something. And there he comes. And there the hit. Doesn't wrap Straight it, but doesn't need to. Yeah, doesn't need yeah. to. <laughs> knocks the running back over, knocks 45 the blocker over. And so number two came up from his corner position, Stanley um, Hamilton, to make a little bit of a player. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Cage Bullock. Uh, came up to, to make a play on that, too. That was 13, oh, Preston Hanica, the running back, and uh, third and nine at the 21 here with uh, 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. Alex Afari's number two. I'm sorry, I had the wrong. So uh, we go, quarterback rocker. quarterback back to pass. And he's, uh, yeah, he, he, you know, the, the problem he had there, he was running backwards as fast as the Lakota West pressure was coming toward him. He threw it off his back foot at the five-yard line. Yeah, he was on a big hurry trying to get out of there. Threw, threw it uh, strategically into his own bench. He so, was like the Iraqi army in full retreat. He was so, getting out of there as quickly as he could. So here's still seven seconds to go, meaning they're going to need to punt because, as that ball was incomplete from their own 21-yard line. See okay. what happens here. We still got the twin safeties back for Lakota West. That, I could not even tell you that was intended for. It was nowhere close to anybody because he was in such duress. Look, looks like snap. looks like 25 Carson Horde back to punt for West Claremont. So here we go. There's the snap. Uh, a little bit low, but he gets a hold of it. Pretty short kick. Uh, gets yeah, a bounce sort of the right direction. See where it actually went out of bounds. I mean, pick your poison here on who you want to kick to. Um, I would kick out of bounds because Afari and Brown. Brown uh, is, you know, the kid we saw took it almost back for a touchdown. And, and Davis is the uh, other wide receiver. Both extremely good athletes. I don't know who you kick to in that situation. No, not, not much you can do there. It looks like at the end of the quarter, look, so starting the second quarter, Lakota West is going to be on their uh, on the West Claremont 34-yard line, first and 10. So, Dan, at the end of the first quarter, it's West Claremont 0 and Lakota West 14. Welcome back to second quarter action. Dan Zeebrink here with Brett Phelan. Is a Firebird got the ball uh, off the punt, and they're on their own 30-yard uh, line. West Claremont's 34. 34, yeah. Sorry, I can't see as well as I used to. So number seven, the quarterback, Mitch Bolden, sophomore, you know, fakes the ball to the to good, and then keeps it himself. Runs up the middle for about gain of about one, maybe. Yeah. I think it looks like they're going to mark two. him. Yeah, maybe two. So. Uh, Actually, a pretty good defensive play there for the West Claremont. Up to now, their best defensive plays had, had really been the penalties, the dead ball penalties on Lakota West that moved him back on that drive. But If you want to see this, solid though, play. take a look here. You talked about Tegers for Bola. If you can get a, a shot at the end of the line, 77, 
who he's playing against. I mean, there's got to be a 70-pound difference between their defensive tackle and 77 Shibola, and at least eight inches in height. So second and eight, Bolden throws the ball quickly out to the right side. Nice move. So he's going to cut the ball, still on his feet, spins one last time into the end zone. End zone. So that's a is. nice play by number 15. That's Trent Lloyd. Trent is a sophomore, and that was a really nice play. And, you know, the catch was... Yeah, look at Shibola <laughs> talking about the left, just pick him up and bench press him over top of him. So we're going to see this. It's a, so, right, yes. the pass is, is really behind the line of scrimmage. Lloyd gets it, makes a nice, nice move, move there. there, gets his balance back, runs through a couple guys and threw in a couple more tackles There's here. Bullock so. right there. You, you, you know, can't quite bring him down. And, and again, this is a sophomore. I mean, you know. Wow, nice spin move. There. Powerful player gets into the end zone. That's that's a kid that smelled the end zone. He wanted it. I mean, they were not going to not deny him from getting into the end zone. He broke at least three tackles on that and broke the tackle from one of the best players of West Claremont, number two, and ran right through him. So Trent is a sophomore, but he already, he, you know, that's his 11th catch on the season, and that's his third touchdown. So yeah. he definitely seems to find the end zone when he makes the plays, he's the, uh, going into the game, was the second leading receiver to Caleb Rao. And uh, I don't think Caleb has caught one yet tonight, so I think they're they're tied there. So really he nice. Ran, uh, ran, that was all, you know, that yeah, was that all yak, yards after catch. And, um, you know, he like I said, he broke, ran through some tackles. I mean, I, you wonder at that age, are they moving back to the backfield as he gets into his junior and senior year and some of these other guys graduate? Because he runs well. I mean, he, he you know, that was an incredible, you know, amount of running after he caught the ball. Well, it's also nice to see in a situation like this where Lakota West has so many athletes out there that, you know, they find space for a, for a, a sure. sophomore like that who can make plays. I mean, obviously a playmaker. Yeah, you generally don't play sophomores at the varsity level. Um, you know, that's usually JV level. And you have to be a really good player if you're going to get up to this level of sophomore and play, you know, a starter. And I don't think you should bring anybody up as a sophomore, unless they are going to start, why stick them on the bench and have them sit there when they could be down at JV playing some? So he's shown us that, second leading receiver, and three touchdowns on just 11 touches, which is pretty impressive. And Howard Banks. And Howard Banks, Banks is another. Jesus. So He's a weapon. Uh, again, for the fifth possession, West Claremont will start from their own 20-yard line. Hopefully they worked a lot in practice from the 20 because they're spending a whole lot of time there right now. And they got, you know, like you said, Brent, they came out really strong. They got, you know, in three plays, they got two first downs. And looked like they were going to, you know, run the football pretty effectively. But, man, West kind of bowed their back, kind of woke up, got slapped in the face. I don't know what happened to them. But, man, they're, it's a different West team than that first series. So, with West with two corners on the field now, they've got Brown at number four on the left and Alex Safari on the right, number two, who's a 6'3 junior, who's also got a lot of Division One offers. I just saw Washington State had offered recently. So yeah, there's a lot of Division One players on this West team. This has got to be – one of the better West teams I think I've ever seen. Um, I've been here since West was a school, and I've seen a lot of good athletes go through. I mean, you got Ryan Kelly playing center for the Colts. You got, you know, Hicks playing linebacker. You got Big Big G or, uh, Big George playing offensive line in New York. So a lot of good players came through here. But there's got to be five or six Division One players on this roster right now, and most of them on the defensive side of the ball. I'm not sure what's on the offense. Obviously, you got. Uh, the left tackle, Shibola, going to Ohio State, that's not, not a small school. Yeah, I think by the time it's all said and done, you're going to have double-digit Division One players out of this I group. I think you will. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. I'll tell you what, and if, what you'll notice there, the safeties were tighter to the line of scrimmage than those two cornerbacks. Those two cornerbacks are playing main on the outside. Absolutely Press shut coverage. down. So last time they did this, they did the uh, wide pitch. Not sure what happened there. It looks like delay of games called. So, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be second and 15. Well, Brent, from, from a, 15 from a yard defensive line. perspective here, you're playing press coverage with those outside guys, which means they're in position to support the run and that you don't have to worry about getting beat deep because they can't beat them deep. They're not going to – when you don't have to worry about getting beat on, on the pass, those guys can come up and you can basically put 11 guys in about four or five yards of this line of scrimmage. Guess what? You're not going to run against that. You know, they're going to have to find some screens or some pop play, you know, something over the middle, something to try and get into some of those vacated spots. Uh, otherwise, they're in trouble because, and really, I don't think West is blitzing. I think they're just, you know, they're doing all that damage with the front three. Well, and, but the hard thing to say for West Claremont is four games in, they've got less than 800 total yards. Right. So against teams that aren't as talented, aren't as big, aren't as successful as Lakota West, they've been averaging less than 200 yards a game. Right. Hard to think that you're going to have a, a significantly significant improvement here uh, early, you know, 
against right. against the first group. Anyway. Yeah, and this is probably one of the best defenses, not only the Vilsey, but best defenses in the state. I mean, I, you know, it's a very, very good football team. And again, like you said, they got big athletic front four. Their linebackers are extremely athletic and good. And then you got corners that are all going to Division One schools. I mean, you know, what, how, do you, how do you beat that? Well, and they were talking earlier, one of the things that they do against some of the passing teams, you can put those corners on an island on both outsides right. and play you nine on nine. Yeah. And, and, and you're playing nine on nine with 290, 260, 260 in the defensive, uh, on the defensive line. The leading tackler on the team, Kuwatch, at linebacker right. and two other darn good linebackers. And that's part of your nine. Right. Uh, that's a tough, a tough road to hoe here. They're going to try to run that ball back across the middle. They like that counter, but Lakota's just staying home. You know, guy, the guy behind is staying and maintaining. You know, he's, you know, your backside, either tackle or linebacker, is maintaining contain on the backside, and it's not working. They're, they're not following. A lot of high school people follow the ball, follow the flow. You can get burned on those counter plays. But Lakota West, very disciplined defense. Carlton Gray has these kids playing really well, doing their job, staying home, and that counter's just not working. So it's going to be fourth and 17 from their own 13-yard line with 9.45 to go here in the second quarter. The tough thing there, Dan, is that, you know, I grew up in an environment where we ran a lot of you know, short traps and long traps. Mm -hmm. And the key to those, the traps is you have to have the line stop penetration. Right. It's not happening here tonight. No. Lakota West, if, if, those, if the guys that are supposed to be stopping penetration are coming backwards a yard or two, the trapping blocking player, as well as the running back, are going to have to right. start, go backwards to get around them. And that's well, a that recipe for disaster. Well, that's too much penetration. You get up field and you, you can run in behind that tackle. But West is doing what you're supposed to. The D linemen are supposed to penetrate one yard, find the ball. Well, they're penetrating one yard. The trapper's coming in and. and, and they're not moving the guy. So just what the T-Wolves didn't need. And oh, they had a five-yard penalty, so they're, the punter started in the back of his end zone. The snap was a little bit high, threw his hands for a safety. Yeah, things are going, the wheels are coming off the truck here for the Claremont uh, Wolves. And, you know, again, playing against one of the better defenses, you almost expect it. And the way this format works, when you're one of the best teams playing one of the worst, you know, worst record teams, you know, these things can happen. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I'm not sure what's going to happen out of it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, there's always an upset, can always happen. But I think there's less chance of an upset in football than there is in, a, say, a basketball or somewhere else. Yeah, it's I think it's too physical of a game. Big, big, strong guys always win. Yeah, I think, I think that's, uh, that's definitely the case. You, you like the plan that the state had to give everybody a chance in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And one other I little, love that one thought. nuance they did this year. So just because West Claremont, we're going to assume down 23 nothing with nine minutes to go still in the second quarter, loses tonight, mm -hmm. they have the ability to schedule games the next three games, That's three weeks. Yeah. So if they want to, they can go back and play some of the teams in their league that they didn't get a chance to play, uh, perhaps some teams that they can be a little bit more competitive with. Yeah, I think, I think the state was thinking that, you know, because of six, six games, you, you might not get some of the um, rivalry games, and this allows you to go do that. Um, like the East-West game, you know, the East and West, if they were losing e early in the playoffs, could go back and play each other. But the way the playoffs are set up right now, East and West could play each other. If, if, if Lakota West continues the, uh, the hold on to this game and East were to beat Sycamore tonight, right. they would play right here next week. Would the two play tomorrow, next week or is it the week after that? I believe it's next week. Would it be next week if they both win? Yeah, that's... I thought East played Mason potentially if they won, and then the winner of that would play. Well, Division one's a little bit different because there's only 16 teams. Right. So it's a straight bracket, whereas when you get into some of the other divisions, mm -hmm. they have more teams, they have some okay. buys and some different things going on there. That could be. I, I'm not sure, but I mean, so you're right. East and West could end up playing each other, and you get that rivalry game. But I, mean, I think that's what the, the thought was, is you let Elder play West High or something to get some of those rivalry-type games in. Um, that you couldn't get in a six-game season. So West Claremont does a free kick. <laughs> Both Davis and Jair Brown looked at each other. Davis then picks it up. He'll have one man to beat. We'll see if the punter can make a play on him. Uh, that, no. He can't. <laughs> he cannot. I'm not and, sure if he touched him. You know, and the tough part there is the punter is standing still. That lo It looked like a soccer goalie. Yes. When somebody, w when Kalen Dudukovic is streaking toward him with yeah. the ball. Yes. And it's like, oh, this isn't going to end well for them. No. So here you go, Davis. And uh, Davis and, and Brown blocks, looked at each other. Give credit. The blocks are good. But, but you know, Brent, in all fairness, uh, West Claremont just doesn't have the size or speed to play with these guys. And, you know, why? I mean, Horde made an effort. Yes. But uh, 
but yeah, the athleticism. It uh, just shows. I mean, every player on West is a step faster, you know, a head taller and 40 pounds heavier. Howard pounds through his fourth extra point of the day. So with 9.21 to go, West 30, and West Claremont nothing. So West got a little bit of everything going tonight. They got a punt return for a touchdown, punt return into the five-yard line. They've got her fumble recovery for a touchdown, and uh, then just flat out, you know, good offense and, and good defense and scoring the way you're supposed to. So 30 to nothing just before halftime, the Firebirds uh, look like they got this well in control. So other than that, the first four plays of the game, mm -hmm. which we were all a little bit surprised when yes. West Claremont had got, or actually the first three plays, they got two first downs. It's going exactly as we expected that they right. got tonight. Right, it's exactly. You know, like you said, I was a little surprised at that first run and even the second run. But uh, um, West has picked it up. They got together. I, I would expect that Bolden probably had a little conversation with them um, to get them fired up or Carlton on the defensive side. And, you know, they've come back here to play, and it's obvious. that again, they're just a little outmatched. I mean, th this is just – this looks like a division – one team playing a Division Four team, and that's what it looks like. I mean, just size-wise, there's not enough of them. They're not big enough, and they're up against a, you know, superior uh, athletes. And what are you going to do? You know, and that's the thing we've seen all year. Lakota West has arguably one of the best defenses want, in the state. You want to take bets on where this goes in the end zone <laughs> or not? Has one of one of the best defenses in the state of Ohio. And on the offensive side of the ball, while they haven't been as proficient this year as maybe they would have liked. They've got athletes across the board. Yes. And offense in a, a game like this does just, have the opportunity. But let's be honest, right? We have a punt return touchdown, a punt return right. to the three-yard line, a fumble return touchdown. So three of the touchdowns. 21 points. <laughs> yeah, and, and the safety. Teams or, yeah, and safety. <laughs> so in a safety. So, yeah, 23, 23 of the 30, 30. points uh, can directly go. To mistakes. To, to yeah, to the uh, to not to the offensive side of the ball for here. So for sure. Lakota West. So it'll be interesting to what what Coach Bolden does here. Do you, you know, do you substitute early? Do you play that half and yes. then substitute at halftime, or do you really try to get that offense working? I mean, the the oh, offense wow. isn't working at all. Simple. So yeah, we were wrong there. He uh, kicked it to the right about yards, yeah. yeah inside the five, but not into the end zone. <laughs> However, the net effect is they're going to the start yards at the twenty yard line. <laughs> So, well, what are you, gonna do? you know, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, you do see in some cases where where teams want to do that, right? They want to try to kick the ball a little bit high inside the five right. and get a return and try to, you know, make a play here. Uh, often like, you get a penalty or a turnover or something else here. It looks like special teams. There's a lot of starters on that kickoff team. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, coaches will use that to play some of their JV or younger kids. Um, to get him in there, but it looks like I saw Kovic out there. I saw uh, Brown out there. I mean, it looks like a lot of their starters are on that. So Bolden doesn't want to give up, um, you know, points off the of special team, so he makes sure his starting defense and his fastest players are out there. And we have some other guys in there. I see number 13, Will Barber, in the defensive backfield. I see uh, number 11, Josh Fussell, back there. So, uh, you know, not playing just 11 on the defense. They've right. definitely got a mix of guys that have been pretty effective for them this season, and they're they're keeping him in there. But I was going to ask, do you think on the offensive side they, they may go a little longer with the offense to try to develop? I mean, maybe, maybe it's not this week you need it. Well, as you maybe said, it's not even next week. Well, if you're, if you're, they haven't got a lot of reps. You know, like you said, it was an interception return, a punt return. You know, they only had to go three yards on their first drive off, off the punt return to the three-yard line and a safety. So they haven't really been responsible for many of these points, Brandon. I mean, it's not like they – have just dominated. So, yeah, I think they'll play a little bit more than defense. Wow, well, what a nice play. Yeah, that was a nice play. We saw Alex Afari, number two, the corner, yep. crack, come down and, and not just tackle him, but he, he just put a shoulder off. into him. Yeah, well, not only that, but just watch him, watch him shed this block, comes up by contained, yep. forces him in, then comes off the block to make the play. So he did three things there very well. He maintained contained, forced that play inside. He, he fought off the block and then made the tackle for a loss. I mean, that was a... Pretty strong play by far. So that was 31, Marcus Johnson, the runner. And it's going to be third and seven now from their own 24-yard line. So we'll see if they uh, dial something else up here. Or are they going to try to pass the ball? That right there shows you why a lot of Division I teams are inside. Quarterback's going to keep right? it going the other way. Boy, you know, they're, that's the, I think that's a great example of the, of the challenge they're having tonight. Mm -hmm. They ran the bootleg. It looked good. Yep. He fooled Lakota West. He got to the corner. 
And the net effect of all that was he gained two, two yards. yards. Because well, look, look at the, because look at the, Lakota, yeah, right. look at the speed of the quick recovery. I mean, he gets outside, but look look at the speed. Twenty three gets out there and chases him down instantly. And th and that's Aiden Miller, one Aiden of your Miller, linebackers. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you know, tracked him down in about four steps. Yeah, I mean, and you could just see how quickly he reeled him back in. I mean, it just is there. And here you go, Brent. Do you punt to these guys? I mean, you know, because five scored a touchdown, Davis. <laughs> but if you cut, you know, um, Brown brought it to the three yard line. I mean, what do you do here? And here we go and again. Having some trouble with the snap. There's, a, there's a, something happened. I, you know, and there's one of those things where like, well, a solid yeah, punt, but I'm not sure that's the punt you want because. Uh, no. I don't. I, I. I don't know what kind of punt you want to be honest here. I think I angle for out of bounds. <laughs> Can you get the ball 35 yards and get out of bounds? Yeah, Is I would punt the for? ball. I, I don't care. I mean, because you know, every time I punt and they receive it, it comes back for a touchdown or the three. So even if I punt it out at the 40-yard line, or my 40-yard line, it's it's. 37 yards better. So punting from their own 22. A little bit of pressure on it. Almost got blocked. Looks like I only sent one guy in there. And as you said, he punted the ball out yeah. of bounds around midfield. See so where they actually mark it. So such a better situation than getting the ball back at the three or yeah. a touchdown. The official is going to mark it. There you go at the Lakota West 46 yard line. So go. 28 and four, 32 yard net out of bounds. That's yeah. uh, that's way better. That's <laughs> way better. I'm not much of a math whiz, but that's way better. You, you know, you also talked about COVID, some of the weird things that you may notice. The officials don't spot the ball anymore. The offense has the ball. The center carries it with them. They put a bean bag to tell them where to spot the ball for each play, but. You're going to watch this, number 54 for Lakota West, the center, and that's Connor Hudson, brings the ball Has out with the him. Ball. Yeah, I never saw puts that. it right where that pad is, the beanbag, and here we go, Bolden back in the shotgun, going to throw it quickly. There you go, Lloyd again. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like, I mean, we're throwing the football with a 30-point lead. I mean, I think he's trying to knock Rust off or get them a little bit more reps and do some things with them right now in a game situation. You know, that's um, another thing. That's your sophomore, Lloyd. Caught the ball for five yards, couldn't break free, but uh, but again, it, he's only a sophomore. Yeah, pretty pretty solid there. Uh, another nice throw and catch from uh, Bolden out to the right side, gained about seven yards. We're going to see that here. That's 22 for Lakota West. Brian White with that catch. It's a nice, nice catch by White on the sideline. Got out of bounds. So and they're moving the football. Oh, here comes some kind of screen. You can see him let through. Yeah, and there's Aiden the Davis. Screen. There's Davis who scored on the Adrian punter. Davis, excuse me. And Davis is going to score again on the screen. They can't. You just get these guys in space, and they can't touch them. Yeah, I mean, and they just can't get them. And, uh, and Adrian Davis there with a nice point. You know, and, and really, it wasn't set up perfectly. Just they got it out, but they got it out to him, as you said, yeah. in space, and, yep. and, and, and there were enough, the rest. enough Lakota guys out good there. Good blocking out there, though. I mean, oh, there was a good, did, yeah, that yeah. was a good block. Lloyd with a good block took yeah, two and guys you out. Look downfield, you see more guys blocking downfield on that screen. Those were linemen that were down there. So that and that hey, and let's give credit where it's due. That's the sophomore number 15, Lloyd, with the Lloyd. with a nice block that was a good block. Gave him enough space, and with Adrian Davis, yes. that's all he needed. And you will see wide receivers in this Lakota West offense block really well because. Bolden coaches that coming out of the triple that stock block where they're out there blocking the corner and you got to stay on them which is a block sort of almost like a reverse box out in basketball you're not trying to hit them hard you're not trying to drive them off the ball you're just trying to get yourself between them and the ball carrier and you got to stay on that block and if you stay on that block it's a touchdown you know when you run a triple option and, and you'll see the obviously his wide receivers and running backs block well and they should if they don't I don't think they get the ball I mean if you don't block on this team for Bolton, you're not going to play much, and you're not going to see much of the field. So I think everybody blocks, and they block hard. So there you go. That was an interesting possession. They started at their own 46-yard line. Three pass and catches from Bolden to three different receivers, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, and it surprises me. I was going to make that comment. They threw the ball three straight times. I mean, it's not very often you see – when was the last time you saw a Colerain football team throw three straight times? I don't think I ever saw it. In, in as many years as I've been watching, you know, high school football, when, when Bolden was at Coleraine, I'm pretty sure he barely threw three times in a game, yet, yet alone three times in a row. So I think he's trying to get that part of the game going, as he, you know, because each game is going to get a little tougher and you're going to need to be able to throw the football. Um, and I think he's trying to, you know, get that all in order right now, and that's what he's trying to use this game time for because at 37 nothing, I don't, I don't think at any point here we're going to be worried about uh, – you know, what, what, who's going to win this contest? Now, the other thing to think about is, remember, we do have that 30-point rule in the second half in 
high school football. Clock runs. So there you go. Kickoff again, just to about the three-yard line. West Claremont going to bring it straight up the middle. And is there much wind? I mean, is there that much wind going one way? Flag's not moving, so yeah, I, I can't, don't. can't see it. Uh, I mean, all kidding aside, this is actually their best starting position. They're out to the 21-yard line. <laughs> that's not kidding aside. You know, and, and well, but no, what I'm saying is that's a lot of work for any high school offense to have to start in your 20 or 21 every, every time. time. And when you're playing a defense like Lakota West. Yeah, you don't want it to go 80 yards. And you yards. have to go 80 yards. I mean, even when you just roll out there and think. Right. You know, even like that first time, we get two first downs, they were still only to midfield. Brent, that was good observation. I never noticed that about the football. I mean, uh, now both both centers have carried the ball to it. That's a COVID rule. That's interesting. So they're, I've they're, never seen that. The theory behind it is, and wow, there's just nothing there for the, uh, you know, they no. try that slow play. You know, they're right. They try to bring it all the way around uh, from the outside. Marcus Johnson, 31, coming all the way back. A little bit of confusion there in the backfield. Look between. at the penetration though from the D line. I mean, they're just, and and you know, that's 28, the linebacker, but he read yeah, the play and came up in there because the offensive line. Has their hands, five of those guys have their hands full with that, the three of those down linemen. That's Josh Lacusa there, and he's actually in on the defensive oh, line. He now. is. Yeah, he's a, he's a junior, about 6'5", and 230, 240 pounds probably. Well, he gummed up the works, as they say, right there, and he did it again. <laughs> well, he could have there. He didn't need to, actually, no, before yeah. he even got there. Andre Profit, number 90, 90 already, was there, had yeah. already bottled him up. Yeah, this is a defensive lineman's dream game. They're making every play. They're either sacking you. Or stopping the run. I mean, linebackers, are, you know, these guys need to just get a fruity drink with an umbrella in it and watch the game. So that's going to be third and 11 from their 20-yard line here for West Claremont. I, you know, Dan, I don't know what they've got. I mean, there's 314 to go. I don't mm -hmm. think they've got anything that allows them to run the clock. I don't think they've they've got a lot of I'd try uh, and throw some screens, something to get outside and maybe have a guy miss. Maybe you might get lucky and, and Brown and Lafari yeah, you know, will trip over a shoelace go, and fall down. Going into tonight, Peyton Bryant, the quarterback, number nine, is six of 24 yeah. for 113 yards. So here he goes back to pass. He rolls right. That was almost picked yeah, off. That, you know what? It, and number 18 was the intended receiver there. And uh, Brian Hurdle, Hurtel, uh, Brown was right on him. Right there. Brown was, you see why, why Brown's going to Ohio State? I mean, he was painted on him. I don't even know how this thing was intercepted. Yeah, we'll see, the, see it again here. You're going to see the quarterback nine roll way right. He's yeah, going to come ball out. should have been intercepted. Back just, yeah, and actually, uh, you know. Yeah, I, it hit him in a bad place right in the hands. You know, I, I, that's one of those tough ones where, I mean, the the cornerback was in a better position to make a play on the ball than the receiver. Yeah, and I mean, there's another is another. Punter. Can you get quite the workout here if he punts one? He's, again, he's going for the sidelines. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, oh well, wow. Brown drops you know, it and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, you know, another a good solid punt, right? I mean, yeah. uh, that was that, you know, that was yeah, Adrian Davis over there. By the time he, he, you know, picked it and bobbled it, ball's out of bounds at the 38 yard line. So from your 20. He may be a little tired, Brent. I mean, he ran a punt back for a touchdown. He, um, you know, uh, scored on a, on a, you know, went pretty far, 40 some yards on a screenplay, I mean, he probably just didn't want to run the ball all the way back. So a 38-yard net on the punt. I mean, actually, the last two punts have been have been good, solid Davis can plays. come over and suck on some oxygen and try and get back because he looked a little tired trying to feel that. Yeah, fielding punts, running back stuff. So we'll see yeah, what happens here. You got two here. touchdowns. I don't need another one. I'll just fumble this out of bounds. Bolden in the shotgun, see if they throw the ball again. Now, wow, look at the defense. Everybody dropped. Everybody dropped. Uh, Lloyd was – Lloyd caught it for 75 cents. On one hop there. Yeah, and you know, he was wide. He was open, and ball was just showing, thrown a little short there. But, I mean, can, can he have more time? Well, there, there was one where it looked like West Claremont only sent two guys in to right. rush and yeah. dropped everybody else back after Lakota threw the ball three times. Right. So, so we'll see what they dial up here. Second, well, yeah, I have never seen West this, you know, throw happy. I mean, that was a bomb on, on you know, first down. Now they're going to run option, and Bolden's guy is going to cut back against the grain wide open. He's going to pick up a first down. So if, if you see that, they, by the time Bolden crossed the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. West Claremont had eight guys more than 10 yards downfield. Yeah. They were they were just dropping. You'll notice this. The they're defensive drop is You have the three linemen. Three. And then, look, you see nobody at the linebacker le level. Here you start seeing defensive backs come up at 10 yards. Yes. So they definitely aren't sure what uh, Lakota West got going. Back to pass again. Throws the ball successfully. Good catch and actually nice <laughs> nice move to uh, to avoid <laughs> avoid the tackle there. That was a nice play by number 18, Jordan Jackson. 
Jordan Jackson did a nice job getting that, making a spin move, breaking tackles. West Claremont doesn't know what to do here. You're right. They're rushing three guys, and then everybody else are falling back in path defense. And, and you know, there's 40 seconds to go. I'm sure part of the uh, you get a holding call. Yeah, I think. I'm sure part of the game plan here was to, with 40 seconds to try to bend but not break, see if they could keep Lakota West from from advancing all the way. They're going to have a hold call, which is going to be again their. Uh, well, the penalty has been West Claremont's friend tonight. I mean, they got the two they got the two personal fouls. That's a holding call against West, um, which surprised me a little bit because they haven't had any trouble doing anything blocking these guys while they're holding. There's only three of them, and there's five Five guys to block them, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of surprised to see that there. But uh, so with 26 seconds yeah, flag, with twenty six right? seconds to go, they're moved back to their own, to uh, the West Claremont 46-yard line clock running. Um, false start. We're going to move back even a little further. So, actually, Lakota West is going to be back in their well, own territory here. I mean, West got, what, 30 yards there? They got holding calls 40, yeah, and so, that's 45 yards. So, I don't know what the official's doing. Um, I'm guessing that's more while, offense. Why the penalty was going on, the clock continued to run. Yeah, <laughs> so they, There's more penalty yardage than West Claremont has offensive. So, yardage. for some yeah, reason. It's a dead yeah. ball foul, so it might be another foul. I think it's offsides this time. But for some reason. Did they stop it for offsides? They haven't. They didn't stop the clock at all. There, he let it keep running. Um, no, it's gonna, a legal procedure. Yeah, I, I don't think he, they stopped the clock. On he's just sides. calling it. Yeah. He, well, they should have stopped the. He's just calling it. Unless we're dealing with. Now, I thought the 37 was only the 30 point was only in the second half. Right. Unless they've decided to call it there a little bit earlier, they had a running clock there. Yeah. I don't so know. here we are at halftime. Here we are. It's 37-0, Lakota West uh, for Brent Phelan. I'm Dan Zebring. We'll see you in the second half. <laughs> Welcome back to Firebird Stadium for the second half of this opening round playoff game between Lakota West and West Claremont. The first half was all Lakota West, 37 to nothing. Dan, do you want to comment about how they got there, though? The stats are a little... Well, yeah, as we were talking before we came back on, the stats don't look like an offensive explosion that would net you 37 points, and it really isn't. You know, they've, they have, they've run six times. They've thrown seven or eight. But you know most of the points are coming from special teams returns. You had you had a touch, you had a fumble return by the defense for a touchdown. You had a punt return for a touchdown. You had a punt return go to the three yard line, and then one yard one play one yard touchdown for three yards. Then you have a safety. All that equates to the offense hasn't done much. So the question you have to ask yourself, if you're Tom Bolton, is do I leave my starters in 
to give them some, you know, game time action or do I pull them out so they don't get hurt for next week? I mean, it's a tough thing because the offense really hasn't done much tonight. Um, the defense has dominated. Um, you know, Brent, as you said, they, they had 30 yards, 35 yards in the first three 30 plays. 30 yards in the first three plays. And, and they've they, got 24 total. For the half for West Claremont. So they've lost six yards since that. And um, I and total. I I don't want to I, I I don't want to sound like we're down. Mitch Bolden was seven of eight for forty uh, for one hundred and twenty yards and two touchdowns. But the pass to Lloyd for the touchdown. Lloyd caught the ball actually two yards in the backfield. Behind, behind it and ran. And on the other side to Davis, he caught the ball on the uh, on that screen, tongue. Yeah, yeah, so he's maybe three four yards downfield. They still count. All the yards count. They Absolutely. were touchdowns. Yep. But really what they, were, what they did is they got athletes in open field who were better than the tacklers athletes in open on the field. Other side. Yeah, just, right now, West athletes are just better. Top to bottom, you know, interior to exterior of, of the entire football team. And again, I'm not trying to get on West Claremont. They're just not as big a school. And, and make the comment about the, ta the defense for, for Lakota West. Where did all the tackles come from? Interior line. It made, They've got 18 of the 32 tackles. Over half the tackles have come from, and you, you'll never see that. I mean, you just don't ever see the interior line. When you dominate up front like they're doing, and I guarantee if you take a look at the other side, the tackles are all coming from the corners and safeties from West Claremont. Their interior line linebackers aren't making a play. So up front, when you get that kind of domination, you just see Brown come off the field. Um, you know, you're going to win. Foot. You, you can't help but to win a football game. So, actually, that was an effective kickoff there for, for West Claremont. They squibbed it on the ground. Right. And it bounced around. Nobody picked it up clean. Lakota West will actually start from their own 25-yard line, which is by far the worst field worst position. Worst field position, yeah. They've started comparing so that. what Claremont feels like. Yeah. They start the, from the 20 every year. The 21 you know? is the furthest, the best right. field position that West Claremont started with. So, here we go. But as we talked about, Brent, you know, Tom Bolden's, clean in every aspect of the game. I mean, he's, his special teams are playing well and hitting on all cylinders. Offense, offensive line, everybody's doing well, and you're going to get probably another holding call here. So that's going to be a half the distance call for West. We're going to go back seven or eight yards. But, you know, the problem is it's just, you know, when you play Tom, you better come ready. You know, you better have all aspects of your game buttoned down, ready to play football. Your offensive line's got to – you know, I'm telling you, there's that defense – is extremely good. I, I don't know, again, that I've seen as good a defense. And I've seen Carlton bail, you know, use bailing wire and Band-Aids to come up with not a very good team and play good defense. But I'm pretty sure Carlton could take the night off and just let these guys play freestyle. And I doubt very many people score on them. So that's a 10-yard holding penalty. One other thing to note, it, because they're up more than 30 points, it's a running clock. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've run one play, and it's 10 minutes right. to go in the, right. in the half. So the, this half will move pretty quickly unless West Claremont narrows that gap. Bolden back, you, you, you would, and there they do. They put the ball on the ground. But uh, looks like Lakota West fell on top of it. Yeah. No, well, no, yeah. nope. No. It looks like he came loose. So as we talked yeah, about, yeah, here we go. So so it looks like Lakota West came out. The first two plays, they tried to run the ball. Nothing happened on the first two. Here's the second one. Yeah, this looks like just an exchange issue right here. Was, Snap was oh, a little. He got up yep. in his chest and he yeah knocked it out. That that was bad all the way around. Yep. So and Bolton had some issues with that last year, fumbling the ball. So that was so the snap was a little high. He tried to grab it high, bring it right down to the handoff. Only made it about halfway down into the chest. The guy ran into it. Guy ran into it. Ball on the ground. They couldn't grab it. So West Claremont with some life here. They're going to start first and ten from the Lakota West 11-yard line. Can they score? I mean, so, they have to get 10 yards here, and they haven't been able to do that the entire game. Other than those first three plays where they had the two first downs and 30 total yards. So. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Number nine, quarterback, is going to roll. Try to sweep to 13, and they're going to lose yards. Yeah, that's uh, – They're not going to get outside on this defense. I mean, that's a – the best thing they could do is hopefully get a trap and maybe block that guy and cut up inside of them because there's no way they got – So you're going to see nine, outside. Peyton Bryant hands it to number 13, Preston Hanica. Preston Hanica is one of their leading rushers on the season going into tonight. Uh, only had two carries for negative five yards. In the, in, in the first half, and now he's three carries for negative seven yards. So uh, and that Hanna was 13 from West that went after, you know, that made the play on that, which was a good job. He did a nice job on the on the play. So Hanika had 146 yards on the season, third leading rusher, um, not having much success so far tonight. Barbara Williams, number 13, uh, defensive back, senior, 5'11", yeah. 160 pounds. 
Come up wow. to the stop, and here we go again. Yeah, so, so they tried the quick pitch to the right. Looked like number two for Gage Bullock, who tried to run the ball around the right side. Oh, yeah, and that was picked and up by number nine, which is, uh, um, God, what's his name? Yeah, that's Kuwach. Cool yeah, he's he's oh, 33. Nine, yeah, he's sorry. 33 on your list, but tonight yeah. he's playing in number that's right. nine. Nine came up, made a big play on that. He was a leading tackle for him. And Kuwach cool, cool made a great play. Jackson came up and just stopped it, and they're going backward. Yeah, I mean, it's third and, eight, third and 18 with eight minutes to go as that running clock continues to run. You know, we were thinking, boy, if they could put it in the end zone, uh, you know, had a chance life. to get close to that, but uh, cut it to 30, but the clock was still going. Yeah, see what happens here. Third and 18 out. For them, they hand the ball straight up the middle. That's uh, the fullback. I believe it looks like that was uh, Austin Foles. Austin is the leading rusher coming into the season with 227 yards. He's the guy who had those first three runs for 30 yards. Uh, he actually had 36 yards in the first half, yeah. and uh, which is more than their team offense. Uh, you know, he maybe got, I don't know, he might have got one there. Um, Vias got the, uh, Vias 98 got the stop on that. 99, they're just going backwards. I mean, yeah. you know, fourth down, you got to go for it. So, for, yeah, so fourth and 17 with the ball here on the, uh, is, on the 18 yard line. When you start out at first and basically goal. So, you, you see that again, you got 90 profit and you've got uh, 98 Vias uh, all in there. We'll see what happens here on the defensive line. Boy, they're just going to throw it up for grabs and, uh, you know. There's just nothing that you're you're gonna. And then you're going one on one with you know a uh, guy that you know two Ooh. division one corners, who's gonna beat him? Looks like the uh, receiver receiver maybe turned his ankle there at the end, but you're gonna see yeah. this press coverage. And oh by the way, I mean that's number 11 for Lakota West, Josh Fussell, who is not one of those two starting corners that we talked about. Yeah. Um, and he was stride for stride, actually right was in better position to make the play and put a hand up, knock the ball out of bounds, yeah, which is exactly see, what you do on fourth down. The only thing I can see them throwing here is maybe a back shoulder or something, getting them throw short, maybe let the corner run by and you can stop and catch it and pick up some yards. Because I don't – you're right, the, the, the West player, defensive players are in a better position to catch the ball than the receivers. So let's see what happens here. Bolden is going to take the snap, keep it himself straight up the middle. He's going to leap ahead for about eight. Looks like they might spot him somewhere around seven and a half yards. So Mitch Bolden faked. After the fumble, comes back with yeah. a good run. Faked and, and runs it up the middle. Got tripped up a little bit. Wasn't real clean there again. A little high snap. The fake uh, handoff was a little, uh, a little un, you know, what, not clean? Got whatever. a bad spot on that, it looks like. They marked him all the way back. So still we're going to be about second and two, just outside the 25-yard line. Here he goes again, going to keep it, and uh, he's going to be short, I think. I think it's going to be third and, third and, third and a half yard. Game. So yeah, they're th going to mark just short. In the first half, Bolden carried it four times for 22 yards. Uh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, he, he lost seven also, so a net of 15. Yeah, and Good was their best runner. He only ran the ball twice, but he got about 21 or 22 yards, yep. longest of 18. So you might want to just give him the ball once here and let him see what he can do. Do you think, look, I mean, do you think Lakota West is going to try to just run the ball down the field and get a, a I would think just so. generate some kind of a, some kind of success here? Here we go in the they option. Run triple, and yeah, nice job. I mean, yeah. Bolden kept it, saw, saw some enough daylight, turned it upfield to get the first down. I can't imagine they're going to throw a whole lot here. Um, you know, they're up 37. We'll see a replay nothing. here. You're yeah, going to see Bolden seven. Option, take right into the boundary. He reads, fakes it. Beats the contain, sees it, turns it up, field, runs through a couple tackles. I'm not sure. I mean, that might have been one that you could have pitched. Uh, 71, yeah. Cole Barella. 72, Ed Bolden out there. You see 77. Uh, that's, you know, Shaboa. You see 73 over on the right side. That's McComas. Um, Some big boys. Blitz straight up the middle. Wow. Gonna, <laughs> nice play by 54. He Man, just he blew uh, that up. He completely sold out, timed it perfectly, ran right up the middle. That's 54, Howard Bingham, uh, senior. And uh, blew that play up as right. I mean, that's going to be a loss of about 10 yards. Yeah, he completely blew that up. Nice job. Came from nose maybe or linebacker? I, I think he came from linebacker and just Man, came he running. Yes, the counter. I mean, he almost took the handoff. So it looks like they're going to mark the ball back at the 25-yard line. So I guess that's probably going to be close to second and 18. Yeah, he was in there so quick, Brent. It looked, looked like he knew the damn count. Yeah, so here's the question on this. Do you, If you're Lakota West, do you go back and throw the ball like they did again, get it out to your athletes in space? I. I Maybe. Yeah, I, I almost feel like, yeah, there is yeah, this quick screen. pass out to the outside. Point of the boundary doesn't need a lot of room. Yeah, not a whole lot there. Going to gain about three. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be third and still probably at least uh, 14 or 15. Yeah, a long way. So we stop the clock. Not sure exactly what. It must be a penalty, right? Hold out on the outside by Lakota West. 
I don't know what he, they're going to wind the clock again. I don't know what exactly you're going to do for West Claremont. Do you take him back? Do you take that penalty? I mean, it would be third and 15. Because these guys want to get home. Yeah, it's gonna, yeah you got to take the penalty. You know, do you almost feel a little bit defeated if you're a Lakota West offense yes. that you can't run the ball on these guys? They can't do anything with these I mean, guys even if ball. you throw the ball on them, do you almost feel like that's that's taking the easy way out? You know, it's kind of like when yes. you're a when you're the, the dad and you're playing your kid in, in basketball and you have to go in and post up and take him to the basket to shoot the, the layup because you can't make the outside jumper? Yeah, I would have been – I'd be kind of – to throw that same little screen they threw to Davis – and see, it looks like they're, yeah, they're just spreading everybody out and going to run Bolden up the middle on a quarterback You know, crawl. I mean, nice run. Still on wow. his feet. Still on his That's feet. Crossing midfield down. and more. Oh, wow. That's he, be a you know, and, 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 and Bolden ran out of bounds. Yep. Just took the – and they hit him anyway. Still hit him and just frustration. So, so the, yeah, that's going to be uh, the well, net of – Third and 18, you give it up on a quarterback draw. Yeah, the net effect of this thing is going to be uh, – yeah, here's the play. So you see Bolden just decides to fake the pass, keeps it, runs through a couple Broke tackles. tackles yeah. A couple guys uh, spectating, right, standing around a little bit. He finally steps out of bounds here. There, there, you can see he's already out. And, and four, you know, number yeah. four was just a little frustrated, I think, ran all the way, Cameron Sleet, and decided to uh, deposit him on his butt. But unfortunately, uh, he was out of bounds. So uh, that's yeah. going to move the ball way down the field. It's going to be first and 10 at the West Claremont 25-yard line. So, you know, if you're Lakota West, do you feel a little better about a nice run by – uh, you know, by Mitch Bolden. Um, well, I mean, it was a place, good play call. They spread everybody out, sent a guy in motion, cleared the middle of the field, and then run quarterback draw. Worked out really well, but, man, if you're West Claremont, you got to feel bad about life. Yeah, and that's Caleb Rao at quarterback this time, number one. Took it down, nice run, cut back, took it down inside the five-yard line for first and goal. Right. Uh, nice to see Caleb Rao out there again. Mm -hmm. Lakota West has a lot of dynamic playmakers. They really do. It's just a matter of figuring out how to get them at the ball in, in the right spots, right, to be successful. So they've switched that out with did Bolden. Did you notice, did uh, Bolden get hurt? Yeah, well, you know, he, 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 he got hit pretty hard, knocked down pretty hard out of bounds because right. he'd, he'd let up. And, you know, that's kind of a shock when you get hit like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know if, if there's more to that. Or maybe Coach saw that today, I'm going to get him out of here before he gets hurt. So here you go. They're going to end up handing the ball cool. off, gets inside the – Two yard line. Unfortunately, Bolden's got to explain it to his wife, too. Why'd you let my kid get hurt? So it looked like both Rao, number one, the quarterback, and number 25, Cameron Good, both wanted that ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kind of fought over it a little <laughs> bit there. The net effect was they got Nothing. maybe a yard, half a yard down to the two yard line. So you can yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, get, no, I want it. No, both had their hands on it for a while. Actually, I mean, but it was well played. Yeah, 54 again. He blew up that one play. Here right. he is again, bing him. Uh, made another nice play. I mean, let's not take anything away from him. I mean, if you look at the size of the offensive line and you look at the defensive line and linebackers. I mean, look at right there, the left right? tackle, Shabol. Look at the size difference he's got on that outside. Yeah, I mean, you it's mean, ridiculous. There's Rao just going to take it right up the middle. Yep. So, you know, that was not a whole lot there. Um, you know, again, it, we probably sound like we're a little bit negative toward Lakota West offense. I mean, the points count. I mean, it's 43 nothing. Sure. It's 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. They just took the ball all the way down the field. Well, they running just picked the up a third and 18, so you got to give them credit for yeah, that. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and just because you don't think of your quarterback running the ball being an offense, that is absolutely positively part of, it, well, it was, of Tom it Bolden's offense. Well, it was smart play. I mean, like I said, he spread. He spread. He went with a spread. He, you know, double. He's got two receivers on either side spread out, so he's spreading, he's spreading the defense out. But he sends a single back into a uh, – into motion to take, you know, depending on what they're running, but it took somebody else out of the middle of the field. And then you run to quarterback draw in the middle of the field where there is nobody. And, you know, he, he got, it was a great design play. You know, and the thing is, so we'll go back with Mitch Bolden. Mitch actually has the most carriers, carries of any of the running backs. I mean, he right. has 56 carries in, ten, in five games, mm -hmm. so over 11 carries a game. Over 200 yards, so he's getting almost four yards a carry. Does have three of the touchdowns, leads the team in rushing touchdowns going into today. Mm -hmm. Now, Caleb Rao hadn't run the ball much, only one carry on the offense so far. Had a couple nice carries here and, and ends up with the touchdown there coming in for Bolden, at quarterback. So that is definitely part of their offense. Right. And, and maybe that's it. So they got the passing game going a little bit. They got the quarterback run going a little bit. Uh, you know, special teams and defense, phenomenal. The thing I haven't seen, Brent, is, you know, they're a triple option team. Have you seen a pitch? No, the quarterback's kept it virtually every, every time. time. So I don't know if they're saying, hey, let's not make any mistakes. Let's just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's be a little bit more disciplined. But when you get against a team like St. X or Elder that plays, you know, assignment football, they're going to have, they're going to take that away. You're going to have to pitch the ball. And that's the question, I guess. That's maybe that's where I'm looking at it here. This wasn't a game that was in question. Mm -hmm. 
ever. ever. I mean, maybe those first three first plays were plays. like, huh, that's interesting. See where Howard goes with this one. Looks like it's going to be into the end zone. So whatever that wind was, Dan, he must it's have found it. Yeah, it's gone. It must have reversed at halftime. So another another touchback there for, for Howard, which, again, I'm where, I, where I was going to that. looking at him from a kicking perspective. I mean, he's a kicker. Where I was going for this, though, is we knew that this game – Mm -hmm. was going to be a big yes. Lakota win. Yes. Uh, I was talking with my son before the game. He said, well, what do you really think? And I said, it, it, it'll be at least five touchdowns. Right. Um, you know, there, there well, we are. Well, just five. And, you know, and again, we said, you know, it's easier to upset in basketball. Because if you get a kid that, you know, all of a sudden starts hitting some threes or that doesn't normally or whatever, you can stay in a game or even win a basketball game by something like that. that, that football is just so based on size, strength. So it's I've, tough for a smaller – Less athletic team to upset somebody this good. So at the end of the third quarter here from Firebird Stadium, Lakota West 44 and West Claremont, nothing. All right, welcome back to Lakota West as we're getting ready to start the fourth quarter with uh, another dive straight up from uh, the Wolves. Yeah, so that's 45 again, the running back folds. He's been their leading rusher uh, throughout the game, although, again, heavily weighted in those first three carries. Gains about three that time, so it'll be second and seven from the 23-yard line. It's usually easy to figure out where their drive starts since they normally start from the, the so 20. Brian, Tell me again about why, why, is the, why, is, why are they not spotting the football on any play? So the theory What's behind the theory? this, it, it, it's, it's COVID. And so that way the offense is the only people touching the ball. So those people who already work together, practice together, go to school together, touch that ball, nobody on the defensive side, nobody from the officials okay. is touching it. They just leave a beanbag there and you bring your ball with you. Here we go, 13, cutting it up, Hanukkah. A little Got, inside play. Yeah, nice, inside ni nice run. Got, uh, it's going to be third and one. And I'm guessing the Lakota West has um, done some, and they have done some sus substitutions here. Looks like that the interior line has definitely been changed up. So Joshua Fussell, again, with the tackle there, coming back from his uh, defensive back position. But we're, before, the, before the break, Dan, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're maybe sounding a little bit negative about Lakota West. The, expecta the, the question wasn't whether or not they could do enough to win tonight. The question is, as they go into next week and hopefully the week after and the week after as the number one seed, do they have enough offense to do it? The defense is not a question here as they look toward their fourth shutout. So we'll see what they do here in short yardage situation. You'd think this is made for Lakota West, uh, and it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, uh, try, you know, knowing how dominant the interior line, defensive line has been for Lakota West, they tried, they're, they're going to try the quick pitch out to the left side here. Unfortunately, the ball went way up in the air. 22, the running back. By the time he got a hand on it, there was uh, Fussell again. Yeah, Number, Russell comes up and yeah. makes the play. He's a, he's a sophomore. Yeah, he's 5'11". A, look, good looking kid. Good, good looking athlete. Made several plays. So here they go fourth and fourth and about seven from their own 23-yard line. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens here. But, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, <coughs> Lakota West defense has been as advertised. Special yes. teams have been effective, both the kicker as well as the, uh, the, re the return game. Singles. So this is interesting. I guess they're uh, not 100% sure what they're going to do with it here. He's going to do a rugby kick. Um, tried to come up with something. That worked. Yeah, you know, wait, uh, you know what? Their last three punts have been fairly effective. Mm -hmm. This one's going to roll dead 45. right around the 35-yard line. So no, it's like 45, isn't it? I think they're all the way down to the 35. Look, they're yeah, they're going to spot oh, it yeah, down no, to the 35. Right. You're right. Sorry. So yeah, so I mean, obviously That's pretty effe kick, yeah. pretty effective there from the 23 to the 35. That's 15 and 27, 42-yard net. The rugby punt. That worked. You know, it looked like he almost was about ready to take off, and he thought better because a bunch of West guys 
the cavalry was coming. So just to make sure we all note, the clock is still running at 9.23 to go here in the game uh, because, of the, because of the mercy roll, they call it. Right, Lakota points. West leading 44 nothing. Uh, looks like we do have some substitutes in there for Lakota West. I see uh, Kayla Brow still at quarterback, who plays a lot out there. Ben Minnick, 20, I see out on the field right now. Uh, we'll take a, try to get some of these names here. Our first line's changed up a lot, too. Look yeah. That in, too. Chabot is out. So it runs straight up the middle for Lakota West. The, the, the yeah. dive actually handed off. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been doing a lot of stuff there. That's uh, number three, Josh Brog Brogdon. Josh is actually one of the uh, leading rushers, 23 carries for 143 yards on the season. So I haven't seen much of him tonight. We haven't seen him. He's a 5'10", he's 215-pound a senior. So he's out there. Maybe we can – there's Coach Bolden on the sideline. Maybe we can uh, – I think we're going to see a lot of them right now, though. I think they're going to – Try to run the ball here, see what, see what happens. Oh, no. Quick good throw. Little yeah, screen. Quick, quick throw out there to number 22. That's Caleb Rowe to Brian White. So a catch out there. Uh, you know, it looks like he gained maybe maybe three or four Defended well by total him, on this in two two plays. So uh, it's going to be third and seven. Just a straight. You know, so actually, he, he caught the ball behind the line of scrimmage. He basically made it right back uh, where they started. So it's going to be third and seven for Lakota West. See what they do here. Eight minutes to go in the game, leading by 44. Rao back to pass. Looks like uh, looks like he's going to scramble loose. Wanted to pass still. I think realized that it couldn't do it. We'll see where they mark him. It's going to be close to the first down. Didn't get a good angle on it. Looks like it is a first down. He's going to make it just past the uh, the line to gain. Yeah, their best play has been the quarterback yeah. running the football. That's a nice play. Look like Rao definitely was back to throw third and seven. Uh, couldn't find it. Pulled back up here. Looked like he might try it, but I think Realize he wasn't sure where he was. Cuts down the sideline, first and 10, just outside the 45-yard line, for almost to the 46. Good so coverage by West Claremont, yep. but uh, what are you going to do? You can see 54 coming straight up the gut again. They're, actually, they, it was uh, sent everybody. I'm a little oh. surprised we're running or throwing the ball this much. Yeah, you I, want it, the clock's going to run no matter what. Even on an incomplete pass, it's going to keep running. So you're not extending the so game we're gonna at see all. That you're going to see from the West left side, They just you know, there you go. They sent three guys. Uh, four guys actually on the left side against Lakota West had three guys to block them. Yeah, so running back actually did a pretty good job. Number three picking up the uh, Brogdon. Brogdon did a really nice job picking up the blood from 54, but too many other guys coming. So that's a loss of 10 on the play, second and 20. So, you know, and, and here's the thing. I mean, in those cases, this is where that tunnel screen would be good if they're going to send everybody. Here goes Rao just going to try to run through him. Doesn't pitch it. Yeah, that was actually, a straight run. Yeah, yeah he man. actually had he been willing to pitch the ball going left. Uh, you know, about five yards downfield, he could have pitched it, and, yeah. and Brogdon, Brogdon might have been off to the races. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go again. It's going to be third and 17 from the 39-yard line. We'll see what. But that looked like straight run, almost caught him. He never even acted never like he was good. He just tucked it and ran. So it looks like I see uh, number 78, Eric Cifuentes, over there on the left side. Mm -hmm. Replace your ball. See who else we got out here. Try to get an angle on some of these guys. Yeah, hard to see from here who all is in there, but. They've definitely made the change. Rao back to pass, maybe. <laughs> yeah, here it is, quarterback draw again. It's yeah, and that's going to be another first down and true. more and still going. And, and there's going to be more. See if they call something back there way behind the play. There's a little bit of extra collector going on. It, was, you know, it looked like 79 for Lakota West. Connor Snowden had a nice block, had somebody yeah. uh, on the ground. I didn't see any flags. So no, no they, you can see the, uh, the head referee was back there just keeping an eye. Nothing too violent happened. Uh, I think he's just happy with the clock running under five and a half minutes to go. Right. Keeping it going. It was a nice run by Rao. I don't even know if he was thinking about passing. I mean, he went back. It looked like a quarterback draw right out of the shotgun. Just took a few steps back. Must have been their most effective play as a quarterback. You know, the quarterback just taking the ball off the gut. So, you know, nice nice run there. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. See what Rao does now. Going to hand it to Brogdon right up the middle. Brogdon makes a nice little uh, hesitation. Nice. Keeps his feet. Close cuts the ball tackle. inside the – it looks like oh. he's right at he's the four-yard line. He's just short, but that was a nice run by Brogdon. He wanted to get there. He reminded me of a little uh, bowling ball kind of going through there. I mean, he looks like a tough runner. Yeah, 5'10", 215, I think is what they got him listed. We'll see him here. You're going to see him come right to the left side of your screen, makes a nice cutback. 64 was uh, one of the blockers right there for Lakota West. Tyler Hermes with the, with the play. So there you see him step, step out, out of bounds. Right there on the four -yard line. Yeah, that's Tyler Hermes out there with a nice block, 64, helped spring that. Got to let him have the ball again. I mean, wait, well, he's not going over there. You know, it, it, yeah, he had to fight to get back for a yeah. gain of about a half yard with four and a half minutes to go. They, uh, they After everybody's down, they picked up the ball like they are going to do something with it. Um, 
So we'll see what happens here again. We've got quarterback draw. <laughs> second and four. I mean, you you got to think Lakota West would like just to run the line up and run it up the up up. Yeah. I see 20 Minnick out on the left side. I see 22. That's Brian White out on the left side. Looks like that's probably 15. Trent Lloyd on the left side. Brogdon three in the backfield with Caleb Rao, number one. I'm guessing that's Brogdon's seven. gonna get it one more time. Malachi Irby, 17 out on the Brown. right. Oh, nice tackle there. Yeah, so nice yeah, uh, 23 and I think that's four for West Claremont. Nice play, loss of one on the play. That's Cameron Sleet, number four and uh, you know, trying to see who there. We got 23 is the other guy, Tyler, Tyler Tack Tack. Uh, what do you do here now? You got your, your third and five. I can't imagine you're going to throw the ball here. But again, I would not be surprised to see somebody go in motion and just spread them out. Let you know, let uh, Rao run the ball right out the middle. So it looks like they're trying to run the ball to the right a couple of times there behind number 79. Uh, that's Snowden. Rao tried him, yeah. Yeah, Rao tried to start at the left, came, spun back to the middle, got a little bit there. You're going to be fourth and goal from the you punt from here? three and a half yard line. So again, we that's tack tack again on the tackle. I mean, uh, you could try and punt the ball on an angle out of bounds at the one. So, so, got so Snowden, Hermes on the right side. Those two guys, still uh, you know a lot of the second group out here. We'll see what Rao does. Uh, 2.54 to go. It looks like West Claremont's going to take a timeout. Yeah, whatever they're going to do, the right guard was going to pull. So I'm thinking sweep of some sort. Gotcha. Out. Trap of some sort. So 65 is Alex Hermes. So uh, not to confuse the two of them. Right. Uh, but yeah, wherever they're parents doing, would, the parents wouldn't want me to do that. Won the guard. So I don't know if they're going to change the play here or not. West Claremont wanted to see what West lined up in, but which West lines up all the time, double, double you know, uh, too, sp too wide, and then you got a single back, and uh, you don't know what you're going to end up with there. So it's 2.54 to go in the game, running clock. Obviously stopped here for a timeout by West Claremont. Fourth and goal from the three-yard line for Lakota West, up 44 to nothing. Uh, second group in on the offense. So I know it's odd, Brent, watching this team. This does not look like the Coleraine offense I'm used to watching in that triple. I don't know if it's only because he's been here a year and a half, really. <laughs> It hasn't been able to install it quite like it was, you know, there. I mean, those kids at Coleraine ran that thing from the time they were in the third grade. Knew it backwards and forwards, and he's trying to get it convinced here. But this does not look like the Coleraine offense I'm used to with the triple option. Um, you know, guys going in motion, straight dive, and then you run option out of it. They haven't really run option all night. I mean, they're running read option, but they're not really running the traditional triple option right now. So I see uh, Tyler Hermes, Alex Hermes, Cameron Snowden out there, Sefuentes. Here comes the pitch to Bra. Oh, they did not a not very good uh, relationship. The pitch phase was terrible. Yeah, they, three and five, and now it was about two and one. Yeah, so there wasn't much there, which which meant the defense uh, was right there, going to stop Brogdon for no gain. Yeah, the pitch phase on that was really bad. I mean, he needed to get out. He needed to be five yards out, and might have been able to break contain if he was out there, but. So you know what, let's kind of remind him a little bit of a positive there, yeah, right? They, they, were, they stopped him inside the uh, five-yard line, so that's a positive. Here we go. Clock will start again at 2.41 to go. See if West Claremont can do something here. And, you know, what's a little bit scary for West Claremont is having to start the ball at your own four-yard yeah, line against Lakota West. And I get it. It's not their, their first group out there. I see number 67, Daniel Lawson. I'm guessing I fullback dive. I see Jalen Range out here, 21, at a corner. Uh, I see number six rushing in there, Jackson Cordes. For Lakota West, I see 20 Minnick out there. We just saw him on the offense. Yeah. Now we see him on the defense. So uh, he's another sophomore, by the way. Yeah, it looks like uh, West is going to pitch her, you know, four shutout of six games, which is a pretty strong if you look at it that way. I figure Hamilton must have pretty good offense. They scored 13 against Coleraine and 13 against West. So a little better offense than what, what you've seen out there. But, I mean, it's it's to me – uh, I wonder if you know Hamilton or somebody scored on you know on a defensive play, if maybe their offense didn't give up. You know the defense didn't give up 13 points. So here we go, second and nine from the four-yard line. Run it straight up the middle. That's 45. The uh, Fultz who ran the ball uh, now, you know, the leading rusher for the for West Claremont gained about two. We're going to be third and seven. We'll see 129 to go. Problem is he's probably got 25 carries for 27 yards. Yeah, he, uh, you know, that was a challenge, right? He had 10 carries in the first half for 36 yards. 
but the team had a net of uh, 25. Yeah, he, there was some loss in there. So we'll see what happens here. And, and that all can he, 20, he had 30. 20, yeah, 20 yard rush. Yeah, thir and 30 in his first three carries, 30 right. for his first three carries. And he hadn't got much since. So we'll see what happens here with third and seven. Going to go under a minute before this ball snapped. Uh, so maybe likely one more play after this one. Yeah, unless, good you know, good little run up the middle. It's going to be short of the first down. He's going to be fourth right. and one from the 14, 13 yard line. And they've started the uh, play clock. Yeah. Technically, they have to run another play. Yeah, which will be a punt. And or not. <laughs> you know, I mean, the only scary thing is if you, well, as I say, if you go for it and get stopped. The clock does stop on the change of possession, but then they restart it once they spot it the other direction. Well, who so, wants to punt? So this is guys. it. You're gonna, you're right. You're gonna have one play. Uh, here gonna, you go. Yeah. And they, yeah, they're just gonna, they're not gonna punt. They're just gonna run a yeah. play. And, and unless they have some over. success and decide to run an extra play, but right. uh, see what happens right here. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're gonna, I think this is it. Fourth and one. Quarterback under center, hands off. The inside handoff. Definitely got enough to get the first down. So and clock will stop it. briefly. And there it goes. It. Just it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it just – so there we go. So, Dan, the game. what did we see tonight? Well, you know, I don't know what we saw. We saw an extremely good West defense, which we knew they had. And, but I don't know what the offense is yet. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Next week. You know, next week and see what that is because I think, you know, next week obviously they're going to play a better football team than they played tonight. And they're going to play it right here at Firebird Stadium. So, for Dan Zeverick, I'm Brent Phelan, Lakota West 44, West Claremont, nothing. See you next week.